Hey everyone, welcome to the health and wellness panel here at the Black Beauty Roster Summit. I'm Alencia Johnson, a social impact and culture strategist, and I'm super excited to be here with Chanel Coco Brown, who is a health and wellness coach, most commonly known for her dedication to the fitness and beauty industry. Um, a former commercial model, Chanel now dedicates her time and motivating others and leading a healthier and happier lifestyle. Chanel, so, so good to be here with you. Hey guys, I am so excited to be here and to just join in the conversation with you, yeah. Absolutely, let's dive in. We'd love to hear about your story um, and what drew you to be a health and wellness coach. Yeah, so I guess like most people, I started out in the gym, mainly for, let's be honest, the physical benefits, the whole, the body goals. Mm -hmm. And I soon, I just fell in love with the feeling of being at the gym, the endorphins I was getting, and really time for me to focus solely on me, and it's something we don't often get these days. So, I fell in love with the gym, it was great, I loved exercising. But then it made me look at other areas of my life, like I was in a toxic relationship, I had dark thoughts, I, I just, I wasn't getting what I wanted out of life. And I thought, what if I put the same energy I put in at the gym, focusing on me, working on me, and I apply it to everything else that's happening? So yeah, that is kind of like when my life changed. I started just having that same outlook and the same energy I was putting into the gym, into my spiritual health, my mental health, my intellectual health. Oh yeah, so then after that, I realized I want to share this with others because I started simply just sharing workouts and that's what I was doing. I was like, no, there's more. There's so much more. <laughs> so yeah, I just wanted to share my knowledge and that your wellness, your health, it doesn't start and end in the gym. It's a whole journey in every aspect of our lives. That's so beautiful. And I'm hearing you talking about this inner, it's actually like an inner beauty, right? Um, and it starts from within and you're talking about mental health. Um, and we know it's so important to our wellness. And I think your story and what you are sharing is you know, not too uncommon for a lot of us women, right? We start in the gym and then we realize there's some more inner work. So what would your advice be for those of us who are trying to balance the two, that, that inner work that we have to do um, to bring peace? So wellness is it practicing healthy habits, basically. So there's like five main aspects. So we have your physical, we have your emotional, we have your social, your intellectual, and your spiritual. It sounds pretty overwhelming, let's be honest. There's a lot going on there. So I always recommend just small changes. Mm -hmm. Start with small changes that you can do. And this is going to depend on your own goals or what area you want to improve on. So, for example, if it's physical, can you spend 10 minutes walking a day? Like anything that you can do. And for me, meditation was a game changer. Like when I wake up and I meditate for like 10 minutes, you're just shutting out the noise. I think we forget to just listen to ourselves. So true. Like our body, it, it tells us what we need to know if we're stressed, if we're hungry, if we're tired, if our body's aching. But we often, we forget to just listen to ourselves and just tune in. And we listen to too much of the outside noise. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I would just say slow down. That would be my advice. Um, make small changes. And also ask yourself questions like, how am I? How am I feeling? You know, like how you ask your best friend, like, hey girl, what's up? How are you doing? Do that to yourself. Like be your own best friend. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> I love that. And the small changes are so important, especially in the midst of this pandemic. I know we were just talking about that before uh, the panel started. I mean, I've even found myself in the middle of the day saying, you know what, girl, go outside, take a 10 minute walk. Don't take a walk and a phone call, but just take a peaceful walk. Um, and that really just changes the way that I'm viewing the day. So I, I appreciate how you're telling all of us to start small, start slow, just the little changes that we can fit into our really busy schedules. Yeah, absolutely. 
So today we're talking about diversity, equity, and inclusion in the beauty industry. Um, and we know that it's so important both in front of the camera as well as behind the camera. Um, you've done a lot of shoots, you do a lot of set work. Um, so what has your experience been and where do you think the, be uh, the beauty industry should be going um, and the progress that can be made? Yeah, so I have. <laughs> I've, I've been behind the scenes a lot of the time. And honestly, my experience before was that there was a lack of training when it comes to people of color, when it comes to their hair or their makeup. I remember one time um, I had a shoot and I had my natural hair. I was transitioning. I've been transitioning for years. So I didn't have any heat on it. And I got there and I think the guy looked at my hair and he just went, well, this won't do. And I was, I was so taken aback at how in front of all the models who were Caucasian, I was like, okay. The look was a slicked back bun, right? So they all had straight hair. Mine had to be straightened to the core. Like I couldn't even wear a bun with any texture. And it sounds so minimal, but when you're constantly told your hair's difficult, mm -hmm. yep. you start to believe it. Yep. You really start to believe like, oh, I'm the problem. And the issue is you don't want to seem aggressive. So I don't want to say, don't do that or cause any issues or make myself stand out any more than they're already making me. So that happened a lot of the time, I guess. And especially when it comes to foundation colors as well. And what's changed now is I'm not afraid to ask questions. Before these uncomfortable conversations, but now we need them for change to happen. Otherwise, there's not going to be a change. We have to have these conversations. So I ask, is the stylist experience with my hair texture? Will the makeup artist have my foundation color? If not, why not? You booked me as this model. And we have to start having these open conversations in order for there to be training, in order for there to be someone to accommodate for every hair type, every skin color. So, so you asked, where do I think progress has come? As yeah, well? absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you guys have probably seen the shows like Game of Thrones or Bridgerton. So there's a couple girls there that are rocking their natural hair. Um, I'm seeing more black models, more people of color being used in advertisements. But it can't start and end on social media and on ads. I think where the real change needs to come is when it comes to recruitment, it comes to your team, it comes to who do you have that can say, you know what, that's not okay, or you know what, we need to include this. That's where we need to start looking because we're seeing brands time and time again slip up simply because there's no one to say, that's not okay. <laughs> like that is not okay. So yeah, diversify your teams because experience is valuable and we can't blame people for not considering everyone because they, they don't know sometimes, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah, I say it definitely is changing, but we need more people in recruitment, more people behind the scenes who speak up. Yeah. And have you found yourself, and I hear this from a lot of my friends who do a lot of this work on camera, and I've even in the few shoots and sometimes doing TV myself, have found this, like having to do my own makeup or having to do my own hair. And can you just talk about those experiences? And then also, how are you tending to your own self-esteem in the midst of these sometimes complicated situations where you really want this job, it's a great opportunity, but what you're feeling, this demoralization behind the scenes is really frustrating. Yeah, um, boy. So I was I can't, maybe 15 when I started my commercial modeling and I had to teach, so I was a makeup artist as well, but I had to put myself and got trained to do makeup so I could take makeup on my shoots. Countless times I'd have to run in the bathroom and just redo my makeup. You know, uh, my husband now, I still do his makeup when he has film sets or when he has magazine shoots simply because he's had so just had such bad experiences that I have to go, I have to do it. So it is frustrating because it always makes you feel like you're just an extra. Like instead of your needs being catered to, you're, you're just there if that makes sense. Yeah. And that's how I feel when I even used to try and buy makeup. 
not that long ago, I was at a very popular brand makeup store, and they had discontinued all darker shades. Mm. And I, I couldn't believe, like, I'm pretty light as well. I couldn't believe it was like um, fair to medium. Yeah, and I like to buy it for my kit. And you know, when I was doing makeup, I was doing all different colors. So I was, yeah, I was upset. And it makes it make you feel like you don't cater for me. I'm not your audience. You don't want me to wear or buy your brands. So the message is is harmful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that othering, it's so its so harmful, it's so frustrating, especially because we know as Black women, women of color, we actually are the trendsetters, right? There's research that shows we are the trendsetters, and yet all of this is happening behind the scenes just for us to even get in front of the camera and on the job. So before we go into um, a quick meditation that you want to do with us, anything else that you want to see change in the beauty industry um, and that you want to point to? I mean, one thing I do want to see a slight change with is when it comes to microaggressions. I feel like a lot of us are faced with them daily and where I would normally get upset or angry or defensive, now I feel like as annoying as it is, we need to explain why certain things aren't okay, why certain statements are harmful. You know, I think a lot of microaggressions stem from ignorance. So we need to have, again, an uncomfortable conversation to simply explain why that's not okay. And that's kind of like the change I've noticed I've started doing now. And while it's frustrating for me, I have to constantly explain for the next person, you're making it better for them. You know, and you're, you're educating, you're sharing knowledge as to why it's not okay. See, I think it's beautiful that we're having conversations like this. We're opening up on our experiences and if I'm honest, it feels united. It feels nice that we can finally discuss like this because we've never done that before. It's true, very true. And I love what you mentioned about like creating space, it's for the next person. I think sometimes when we hear, particularly as black women, that we have to educate someone on something or expose them to something, we're thinking about teaching that person versus what you said, creating the space and creating a different environment for the person who came af who's coming after us. That's so incredibly powerful and, and recentering. Yeah, absolutely. So um, you, as a wellness coach, I know you want to guide us through a short meditation this Sunday morning, afternoon, wherever you are, evening, if we have people yeah. around. <laughs> um, I am excited for this because it, it will really, you know, I told you earlier, it's part of something that I'm trying to add into my daily life too. So really excited for this and we'll turn it over to you. Absolutely. So yeah, um, I hope you guys join me with this. Um, the conversation was pretty heavy, you know, necessary, but heavy. So we're just going to take some time out just to ground ourselves. We we'll absolutely love meditation to just let go, center myself. So yeah, let's begin. All right. All right, guys. So we're going to start just by settling in. And I hope you join me with this, guys, by the way. So we're gonna start by closing our eyes. Take a deep breath in and out. And just notice any areas of tension, maybe in your jaw, your forehead, your shoulders, and just let it go. Lengthen your spine. And now take another just deep breath in and exhale. And just notice how your stomach fills up when you breathe in and how it empties as you breathe out. Um, you can even place a hand on your abdomen so you can feel this sensation. Now after one more deep breath, we're just going to focus on our normal breathing. 
Let it resume at its normal pace. And we're just gonna focus as we inhale and exhale. Now you may have some thoughts and that's okay. Let them come with no judgment and then let them go and focus back on your breathing. And now I want you to think about something you appreciate in life. It can be a person, a place, an item. Let it fill your mind with joy. Feel the warmth and comfort this food brings. And I just want you to focus on this for a little longer. Just visualizing this thing that you appreciate. Now, if your mind wanders, that's okay. Just gently bring it back to the floor. And one more deep breath in. And out. And one final, last loving deep breath in. And as you exhale, open your eyes. Now, these gentle few minutes, whether it's three or five minutes, really helps to just ground you and quiet your mind. Whenever you're feeling anxiety or stress, I fully recommend just pausing. So thank you guys for joining me with that short meditation. And I'm thankful for this moment. And yeah, have a lovely rest of your day. That was beautiful, Chanel. Thank you, thank you so much. And everyone go follow her for more of this. Um, we are feeling centered for today. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, thank you so much, everyone. Bye.